Hey, welcome back. I thought we'd do a quick video here. I'm in a co-working space, so it's gonna look a little bit different, sound a little bit different. We'll see how it goes. Um, so hopefully, hopefully a quick video tonight. I wanted to implement class variables in our programming language. Uh, Ruby has um, variables, instance variables, global variables, and class variables, is that it? I think that's it. Uh, so I haven't gotten around to doing class variables because honestly I don't ever use them in Ruby, but I know that um, the, our parser library does use them, so I'm gonna have to get them done in order to, uh, to make things work. So I did this little test Ruby program to see how they work. Um, basically, a, they are, they're defined on the class and you use these double at signs to access them. And that double at sign works from within a class method and within an instance method, and they return to the same thing. And then also subclasses um, of the, the, the one with the, the class variables, subclasses also get access to those, um, to those variables. So, so I do that. And I run Ruby class vars. So I get the same object, and it's the same object ID all the way down. Um, and if you try to do it on a class that's above that level, you get an error. Uninitialized class variable. Um, same way, if you try to access it before it's been defined, uh, you get this uninitialized class variable. This is unlike. Um, Unlike in uh, instance variables, where you can say, um, uh, well, I can just do it here. Uh, you get a nil if it's not defined. So class variables are different than instance variables in that way, too. So let's just see, see what we can do. Um, I assume that I want to make a, um, a test that is similar to that, so we'll just do this. Uh, test Natalie class var test. What else do I have here? Global test. I don't have anything else named var test, do I? So we'll just call it class var test.nat. And we'll do, I gotta, gotta pull in something here. Help pull my global test. There we go. Um, okay, and we'll paste in this. I don't think I want to bother with that right now. Don't need that level of testing. Okay, very good. So we'll do describe class variables. Um, it, class, let's do class variable it. <laughs> it works. <laughs> Yeah, so let's start with this. Hmm. Come on. Okay, so that's probably the simplest test right there. And um, let's see what we get if we just try to run that test. Actually, let's run it with Ruby first. Got to actually run something. Uh, test only um, class var test that passes in Ruby, perfect. And then Natalie test Natalie class var test, and we get um, op assign or 
op assign or. My guess is that's not been implemented yet, and that's just an operator. Um, so if I do this, that's going to say the same error. No. Unify local variable. Okay. Op assign or. Well, we can implement that. That's fine. I think I already have one that's similar to that. Why? Oh. Is this it's not opening in them? I don't know what happened. Okay, um, class var test. Yeah, I thought that everything was looking funny. Pass one. Assign and or assign or assign or. I really thought I had done something with that. I seem to remember this assign or thing. Oh, it's in a branch that I haven't committed yet. Okay, hold on, let me look at my branches. I've been doing some stuff over here. Um, let's just see what I did here. I think I can just copy that. Nope. Uh, apparently never, never did it. That's fine. Not hard. Um, process. Hmm. Just realize that's not alphabetical. That's okay. I have a process or here. process op assign or, and what does it look like? Something here, and something here. Okay, so it definitely just has these two, we'll say, um, thing, thing two. I just want to see what these are. Ivar and I assign. skip or no I'm trying to decide if I want to even do this right now it shouldn't take me too long but I'm trying to decide it depends on what type of variable it is on how we it needs to be done at runtime We could do defined. Because we already implemented defined. Uh, we don't know what it, what it is for an Ivar. For real? Come on. OK, it's a nil. Why did that take so long? Uh, course. Okay, so it works for something. So what if we did if define name, what if we did uh, see if
if yeah so we, okay 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 var equals process var and we'll do that var otherwise c if s break uh yeah So what we're doing is we're turning this into C S expression. An S expression that roughly represents the C that's going to be generated. Um, some of this stuff is just made up stuff. Well, actually, all of it's made up. Some of it actually resembles the final C. Some of it is just completely made up and makes sense to me. Um, but if you go and look for the C if it's in pass four, it all, all it gets to pass four before it is actually written as C. And so it takes a condition, a true body, and a false body. And so I was just thinking through how we were going to do that. But this is the condition if it's defined. Um, and then the, the true body is just return the variable as is, um, whereas the false body is to process the assign like so. So that might work. Uh, let's just try it. Um, we'll do it with a global variable. Unknown defined type. And I just realized defined isn't going to work here because um, a variable may be defined and it's nil. So I think we need an and, which I believe we have. Nope, we don't have an and yet. So let's go ahead and make that to process C and. This one's easy left-hand side, right-hand side, and it's, it's going to be um, process the left-hand side, ampersand, ampersand, process the right-hand side. And so here, I think we want to do C and And it's truthy. Is that how we do truthy? Yeah. OK. Unknown defined type, not global get. So we need the unprocessed here. Cool. And if I should stay 10, perfect. And let's make it work with um, instance variables. Unknown defined type, Ivar. Um, I'm going to come back to this. <laughs> this is going to be, this is going to snowball. Um, I don't actually want to commit that right now. I'm just going to go to here. Does this, does this parse? CV assigned class variable assigned. That's the meat we want to get to. Um, I'm going to have to think about this on this. Uh... Yeah, I'm, I don't like this right now. I'm going to comment it out just so I don't accidentally use it because um, I'm not happy with how this is turning out. I think I was a little bit hasty in, in writing that. Sometimes, sometimes it happens. Um, but if I go back to here, this actually works. Um, and our problem is something more in line with what we expected. Um, CV assign and then a name and a value. So it's going to look like this. Um, process CV assign. 
Some of these are not in order. Uh, C V A S G N. So we don't care about the beginning. This is the name and this is the value. And we want to do nat cvar because we have these. So I think we want to do cvar like so. Hmm. It's going to take an environment and I guess we pass in self for the object that it needs to be assigned on. Yeah. And then the name, which we want to process, turn it into an actual um, uh, symbol, an actual uh, object. Um, and then we want to process the value. How far does that get us? Syntax error 142. Oh. XP must be a six was a symbol at, at foo. True. Um, so here I just did, yeah, we'll just do it that way. S, turn it into a string. Cvar foo not rewritten in pass. Cvar. Nat Cvar. Oh, Nat Cvar set. Okay, and then we also need one for Cvar. Process Cvar. Oh, this is going to be a name. Nat Cvar get or null. Oh, this doesn't pass in Ruby. Initialize constant. Um, fascinating. Well, we're just going to change our test because I'm not interested in fixing all that right now. Set foo. Set foo should equal one. Okay, so pass in Ruby. Passes in Ruby. What do we get? Cvar at, at foo. Okay, we're back to that. Process Cvar. I don't want that to be a null. Cvar get env self name. Perfect. Do we get passed pass one? Yes. Okay, so we're all the way to C where these symbols don't exist, uh, which is great. We're making progress. Natalie C, I want to implement these now. Nat Ivar get and set. Um, I think I want to copy these and cheat. Cvar set and get. Of course, they're going to be completely different. Uh, well, not completely different, but a lot different. Make sure the name. Name. <laughs> has to start with two at signs. Name error is not allowed as a class variable name. Paste this down here. So it has to be at least two uh, characters have to start with an at, at sign. And then so 
basically we want to look okay if object is a class then look for class var on it uh, this is going to be 1a 1b if not a class set obj to obj class okay step two Step two is going to be um, if class has variable return it, this is 2a, 2b is if not, um, look at superclass, and then go on up the chain, I guess three if not found on object does it go all the way to basic object we should figure that out so if I have class say basic objects class variable set foo 100 and I do class foo object foo dot class variable get it goes all the way to basic object. Okay. If not found on basic object, then raise error. And what's the error? We want to raise that error. Okay. So actually step zero is to initialize class variable table. Um, no, it's going to be somewhere in here. So this is step step zero. If not a class set object, object class. Um, initialize a class variable table. So let's, uh, how are we going to define this? Um, I'm going to do it just like methods, but it's going to be C vars. So just, uh, so let's do step zero. If nat type of obj equals nat value class or nat type obj nat value module I assume you can set it on a module module bar oh boy module bar bar class variable set bar yes Okay, so you can set it on a module. Also, if it's, on a, if it's not a class and it's not a module, then we want to set object to object class. And then we want to assert that it is now a module or a class just because I like to be paranoid. Okay, so we did that. Um, and then we'll just copy this up here. That goes with this step. If the CVARS table is not initialized, then we want to initialize it. Um, it takes a string, compares a string, so on and so forth. Um, don't think we need a hundred of them. Let's just initialize it with 10 slots to start with. CVARS table, okay. If class has a variable, return it. Okay, um, I think that's this. Uh, CVARS name, if val return val, 
else if I don't remember does basic object have a class it does how do I know when I get to basic object Oh, no, no, super class is null. Perfect. Okay. Um, if object has a super class, then go recursively. Do I want to do that? I don't think I want to do recurs recursion while. If there's a value, then definitely return the value. If there's not a superclass, then do not raise name error. Uninitialized class variable in foo name um, otherwise just keep looping. Uh, that feels right to me. The same logic is going to apply down here to set as well, except I'm going to need these two things. So if If there's a value, then oh wow, how am I going to do this? So it needs to look. Hmm. It needs to go up the chain, and if it doesn't find it, it needs to go back and use and set it on the current class. So if it's there, then then set it where you found it and return the value. If there's no superclass then set it on the object. This is not OBJ, this is class. And to make this more clear, let's call it um, super class. Mm. Call it parent. Just so it's a little more clear maybe. Clear to me at least. Uh, and then if the parent, if we run out of parents to try, then just set it on the object itself and then class, no, sorry, parent equals parent super class. Ah, well, I'm sure I, sure I messed up something. 
but um, it might work. Assertion, line 244, it's not a class and it's not a module. Um, if it's not a class and it's not a module, Boolean, um, Boolean uh, algebra, Boolean logic, not or and. Oh, gotta run make. Get out of the way here. Line two forty four again. Oh, <laughs> assert. This is or. I'm not uh, not dumb, guys. Okay, maybe I am. Okay, class var test y. Really, what? Well, that's fun. Let's try something simpler. We'll see if it works in Ruby. Class variable access from top level. Okay, fine. Foo, foo. Okay, that works. And let's print it. Okay, so if I run this with Natalie. Ah, fun. Get some sort of seg fault or something. Does this look right? We define the class. Here's the class body. Here's the method. Method here. So that's CVAR set, not CVAR set, EMV self at, at foo integer. Okay, time for debugging. This usually crashes my recording, but we'll see. Looks like it's still recording, good. Um, memory read failed for, for a null pointer. Let's just make, I, make sure I didn't accidentally leave an, because I did some copy paste. No, that I like. Uh, I think I need to set this to null explicitly when I make a class, that subclass. Yeah, and then in main C, I'm going to make sure this is also null. Nope. Bad access. Address zero. It's definitely in the hash map. Hash map get. Oh. I want to try hash map getting if it's initialized. Oh, and I didn't um, do obj equals obj superclass. That wouldn't have worked anyway. It wouldn't have been stuck in a loop. Um, So let's just say 
if obj cvars was it dot table Yeah, I got to rewrite this a little bit. So if there's a table, then try to get the value. If you found it, then return the value. If there is no superclass, then raise an error. Otherwise, go up the level. Okay, so probably need to do that down here too, or at least resync this a little bit. Let's copy this. If there's no superclass, then mm, I don't like this either. Hmm. I don't want to do this. I almost want like a little helper function that will do this for me. I don't want to initialize it on every class because it's a little bit of a waste. Most classes won't have class variables. So it's a waste to do it. But when we need it, we need it. Yeah, I'm just going to copy this. Um, down here. Because that's where we're setting it. And that means I don't need it up here at all. Because if there's no table, there's no no bother looking. Okay, what, what are you confused about? Redefinition of val. Oh, oh, right. If um, exists. Yep. Um, perfect. Well, I don't know if it's perfect, but it might be better. Ooh, we got a one. Perfect. If I change this to 100. OK, see var, class var test. Cool, my specs are passing. Are we done? No, let's, uh, let's see if we can write some more specs. It works on. Um, class methods. Let's say it can be get set and get set and got <laughs> can can be set and um, retrieved <laughs> on class methods because that's what these are set foo and foo um, and we'll say can be set and retrieved on instance methods. Mm. Yeah, we'll just call this F. So let's see if that works in Ruby, just to make sure. Nope, undefined method set foo. Oh, that's right. So we need this down here. Perfect. 
Oh my goodness, it just works. Okay, um, on class methods of a subclass, I'll say, uh, I cannot type bar that foo should equal one. And I'll do it again, but with bar as the thing, and we'll say this should be equal 10. And some methods of a subclass. Bar.new set foo 10 is 10. So first bar should be one, and then we call it, and then it should be 10, and so should F. They should be sharing. The same with this. Oh, I already did that bar, foo. Foo foo should equal one, bar foo should equal one, bar set foo. This should now equal 10. Test it with Ruby, make sure. Nope, one should be equal to 10. So can be set and retrieved on class methods of a subclass. I if I can turn on the lights in here. Ooh, ooh, much better, much better can be set and retrieved on class methods of a subclass. Okay, class methods of a subclass. I'm guessing this is the other one failing, right? Let's just have one failing test. Oh, and then let's see exactly what is failing. Okay. So foo, so I'm curious if bar is correct. It is, so it's just the foo is not being set. Uh, what did I miss in my logic here? I set it on foo first. Bar set foo is setting, it's not setting it on the parent. I don't like this parent, let's say current. This is just confusing me. Okay, so it's just a simple rename. So it should have found it. Okay, so let's do this. Printf current class name is current class name. And I want a simpler, a simpler thing. Foo. No. Just comp these out, set foo, don't care about that, don't care about that, don't care about that. So I only care about these two. Curious, this passes, right? Nope. Oh, but this would pass. Yeah, that would pass. 
This does not pass. Treat on class with a subclass. Current class name. Uh, let's let's print the value too. Um, current class name value is. Uh, it's always an integer with our test, so we'll just do this val. Um, nat int val val. Ah. That fixes it. Okay. Make. Okay. So current class name is foo. Value is one. Current class name is object. Value is one. Current class name is basic object. Value one. Okay. So that was the. It's time through the first one. Current class name is bar. Value ten. Foo. Value ten. Why did it keep going? Why did it keep going past foo? Table. This equals just give me the pointer. I don't care. I just missed. I don't even run make there, so that's fine. <laughs> Figured it out without my printfs. Coo coo coo. Put all this back. Make sure it passes in Ruby too. It does. Cool. Well, um, I think that just about does it. Um, is that everything? Oh, let's test the let's test the exception. So we know that. Um, it raises an exception if the class variable is not set. Uh, when let's see when attempting to retrieve a class variable not set. So let's just say um, foo dot who should raise now I'm confused raise error is it should raise error how did I use that should raise error yeah Should raise error, and the error is supposed to be a name error. Does this work? Does not keeps going forever stuck in a loop. So what was I doing? I was doing a get. So I'm up here. If there's a table, great. If the object doesn't have a superclass, then raise.
and this has a, a an abort an abort in it, so it should quit immediately. Okay. Is it just looping on the same object over and over again? No. Oh. Well, that was weird. Uh, I thought it was looping. Should have raised his name error, but instead raised nothing. Object always has a superclass. Really? Object always has a superclass. Okay, so let's ignore these, get rid of some noise. Oh, okay, super cool. I didn't even see that. It was in the noise here, I guess. Although I don't, I still don't see it. But it passed. Oh, duh. Oh no. <laughs> that means I'm contaminating the tests. I almost need a new class for every test. Okay. Let's get rid of our printfs. Now that we know what the problem is, I, f I forgot. This is global. It's going to. I mean, it's fine for all of these. Yeah, that's fine. Oh, is it? No, it's not. Because I need these to have a clean slate. Hmm. Let's just, um, this is going to be kind of ugly, but I'm just going to do foo2, two, bar2, two, foo3, and bar3. And this will be foo four. <laughs> it's a little gross. <laughs> uh, actually, it's a lot gross. So let's do this. Let's do. Um, C var. Okay. C var test one C var test one B.
Mm. Man, I wish there was a way to do this. A little bit less gross. To a... You don't even need that stuff. And this one doesn't use instance methods. So we can specialize these a little bit. This one doesn't use class methods. So this is going to be CVAR test 1A. Oh, there's not a B. Perfect. See where test one, see where test two. Am I not being consistent? Okay. See var test two. This is going to be see var test. 3a, see var test 3b, <sighs> gross. Absolutely gross. So this is going to be class. This is going to be 4A. Somehow this makes sense in my head, I think. Four A. This is going to be four B. And this is going to be C var test five. I'm sure I screwed that up. And if I method set foo on C var test two. Uh, these are instance methods. Cool. Five specs passing. No pollution between tests. Get the error. We have class variables now. Sweet. Let's commit it. Okay, so we're now processing CV assign, CVAR. Oh, we, we want to get rid of this. Um, test, that's, uh, let's do yes, no, no, yes, ooh, see our set. Where was that? Nope. 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 Yep. 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 And then the other two things are stuff I want to come back to. So I'll just get rid of that. Add class variables. Is that it? Is that? That was easier than I thought. Not too bad. I did take an hour because, um, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Just took an hour. Everything takes an hour these days. Um, but that's cool. We got a major feature of Ruby. And um, make sure that all our tests still pass. But uh, thanks for tuning in. Um, not super exciting, I guess, but, you know. 
has to be done. Something has to be done. And um, yeah, I'm pretty proud of that. I think it's good work. Um, it's something I, oh, I know what we can work on next, maybe next video or something, or maybe I'll just do it off video is to wrap that in a thread, uh, like in a mutex so that multiple threads can, can, um, can work on those things atomically and not screw up data, uh, especially in the hash map. There's a bunch of non-atomic stuff in there. So I'll probably wrap those in a mutex, um, which I haven't done for instance variables and other variables and stuff like that yet either, uh, but I'll get around to that. Um, anyway, thanks for watching. I uh, hope you learned something. Um, and if you see any mistakes, feel free to comment below and let me know. Thanks.